Brian, you're very welcome back to Leinster Rugby. You've been at the World Cup with Samoa. Can you just explain what your role is here with Leinster? Yep. Um, no, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, I'm senior analyst with the with the team. Um, myself and Julia Fortune working with the senior team, and Owen Smith uh, with the academy um, and all the underage stuff. Emmett Farrell heads up the department, um, as well as his dual role as kicking and skills coach. So that's me. Well, obviously, Mike Alatoa, who was co-captain for the campaign, and Andrew Goodman. Um, who's coaching here in Leinster? Um, we're both involved with Samo for the tournament. Um, so it kind of it started with just a quick connect, really. And the the head coach of Samo, Salala Mapasua, came in um, when he was touring Europe to kind of catch up with the players and coaches, and um, kind of just dropped that I'd be interested then. And um, you know, I think it's it's every player's dream to play at a World Cup, but for staff and um, management it's 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 always cool to test yourself at the at the highest level or international level so um yeah then i got just been in, put in touch with the head analyst of the team who's uh, alistair beaton who works with the chiefs in new zealand as well so once that connect was kind of made it just kind of yeah cyclical effect and yeah found myself at a world cup <laughs> it was very different very different but I'm so glad that I got the opportunity and I'm grateful to Leinster for giving me the opportunity to go to Samoa itself. Um, it was a, really a once in a lifetime opportunity and experience. Um, the people there are unbelievably friendly, um, overwhelming in how much they welcome you. Um, the send off we received before we left for the World Cup was something I'll um, never forget. Um, and just being part of the Manu Samoa over there um, takes things to a whole new level and there's a certain responsibility and um, that comes with being part of the team. Um, so for me, just being a, a regular Irish person in uh, the middle of Manu Samoa, uh, or as in the middle of the Manu Samoa squad, it's kind of, yeah, it was very different. And, but I think the players and management really sort of welcomed me in that aspect. Um, I was the only one who wouldn't have been a New Zealander or an Aussie or some way down that way, um, or Samoan itself. Um, so they were very good and I suppose welcoming me into the team and making sure I was <laughs> understanding what was going on. The locals were yeah, just very unique. They're different, so positive, uh, smiling and I suppose when you go there and you, it, it kind of just makes you feel how fortunate you are for, um, for what you have your family that you have and everything that you've grown up with here. Um, you go out and see people down there and they're so content and um, sufficient or self-sufficient with what they have there. Um, so there's definitely a certain element of that to it. Um, but so positive all the time, um, always willing to help out. And probably of the, the whole experience, I found myself, <laughs> I got on with the Samoans the best. So uh, yeah. I'd say it was about maybe 10k from where we left to the airport. Um, it was sort of just a, a wagon of cars, about 10 cars, buses, um, open top, and the lads, all the players on the back of the trucks um, with the flags and the music. And yeah, for the start of it, going through the initial sort of city, Apia area, um, there was, yeah, people kind of beeping horns and all that kind of stuff and music blaring. And then uh, once we got out towards the villages, all the school kids were coming out and jumping on the bus and all that sort of stuff, dancing and singing. <laughs> Good, it was, it was quite cool. Um, obviously working with a lot of the lads here. Um, and obviously Johnny Buckley as well, who was in the role before me, is on the other side with Ireland. So it was cool to, to do that and to be able to have that as part of the journey too was definitely something I'll always remember. Um, but no, it was, it was good to catch up with the lads the week of and, and see them before and after the game. And yeah, I think they all got a kick out of seeing me in my Samoan gear, um, yeah, singing the Samoan songs. So yeah, no, it was an interesting experience, but um, yeah, I was probably in Camp Samoa that day. I suppose the, in the end, the results were frustrating. Um, we lost three games, but by a combined margin of 16 points. So um, I'm sure the Irish lads no, the, the small margins of defeat, but yeah, it was tough to take, particularly the Argentina and Japan one, and then 
gave it one final crack in the English game and just came up short. Um, but I'm sure for a lot of the lads who are involved, if, if they have another World Cup in them, they'll look to right the wrongs. And uh, the team itself are sort of unique in their own journey um, and trying to build a bit of a legacy within the team and get more players to declare for their country. So I think for them, it was sort of making a statement and show that they can compete at that level and um, to get more of those sort of tier one um, games and um, to show what they can do. So I suppose it was a positive in that aspect. Um, yeah, they were in a freaking contact. <laughs> no, the, yeah, it was yeah, seven days between the England game and came back there to sit on the bench against Highfield and our eight half went down injured in the warm up. So I found myself playing 80 minutes on the weekend. So <laughs> no rest for the wicket. Um, but no, delighted to be back. Uh, Andrew Goodman was running a bit of a, a camp out there in terms of keeping us all in shape um, before the working day started. So good for the head, good for the body. And um, yeah, back at rock now, ready to hopefully go three in a row.